marvelous ovation and a standing ovation from a great many in the crowd here in Ottawa. Uh, we're standing by for the march, a little visual identification. I'm Jim McKay. This, of course, is Dick Button. And these world championships mark the halfway point between two Winter Olympic games as this ovation just continues and continues for the young Americans. Two years after Innsbruck 76, two years before Lake Placid in 1980. There are a lot of questions to be answered before 1980. We might see the beginnings of the answers to some of them here. For example, uh, can Irina Rodnina, trying for her 10th consecutive world championship, remember here, continue this high peak of performance right through the 80 Olympics? Is there a young American man who might be capable of a gold medal by that time? And then, of course, Linda Fratiani, America's world champion. Can she become one of the real superstars in the tradition of, well, Peggy Fleming, Dorothy Hamill, and the other greats. Well, I think this competition has a great deal more to offer in many setting. We've seen a lot of that in the events leading up to today, and I'm sure that we're going to see a lot more questioning the marks of the judging before this event is over. I think this competition also shows an enormous improvement in the, in the field of technical jumping. This doesn't mean grace in jumping, it means technicality. We're seeing young pairs do side-by-side -side triple jumps and quadruple twist lifts. This is extraordinary, extraordinary. But I think more important than anything, we're seeing a competition which is in limbo, not only between two Olympic Games, but a competition was in limbo looking for a style, a competition looking for a new direction in this sport. We've seen those directions given to the sport by the Protopopovs and Janet Lynn and Dorothy and Dorothy Hamill and, and Peggy Fleming and John Curry and Toller Cranston. The question is now, who is going to give it to the sport at this point? Who is going to give it a new area, a new mode of skating that's going to make it different and better just because they were in it? And that's what this competition is all about. Here comes some slow motion now. And here is that slow motion from Ty and Randy as they skated around the edge of the rink. Watch how she just catches her toe there. It wasn't even a catch on the side boards, but just the catch of her toe in the ice. A very obscure slip. It shouldn't count off against her. But in this highly charged atmosphere, you just cannot give a judge a chance to take your mark down. There are the marks. 5-7, 5-6, 5-5, 5-7, 5-7 again, 5-6, 5-7, 5-5, five, 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 and 5-7 five, five, good marks. But it'll be very interesting to see whether they stand up well enough to win them a medal. They won a bronze medal in the World Championship last year. They're in fourth place, remember, before the free skating phase this time. The issue is still very much in doubt. We're in Ottawa on a beautiful winter's week. We're at the World Figure Skating Championships of 1978 in Ottawa, Canada before a packed house. This, the pairs competition, Manuela Mager and Uwe Babersdorf of East Germany. On the ice, we've seen a great performance by Ty Babylonia, Randy Gardner of the United States, yet to come the great Irina Rodnina and Alexander Zaitsev going for her 10th consecutive world championship. Mager and Boersdorf now going into their pair sit spin. A nice one. Not done with the elegance of the style that Babylonian Gardner have shown. Is complete again at this mo moment in their program. But remember the small slip that Babylonian Gardner had at the end of their program. All you need in judging when you don't have an outstanding performance or a quality that is 25% better than your competitor is to give them an opportunity to mark you down. Triple, triple twist lift. A move that Babylonian Gardner did not have. overhead. No, I'm sorry, they did two hands, perfectly free for them to do. That's the performance for Manuela Mager and Uwe Favorsdorf. Good, fine, not great. Mager and Favorsdorf of East Germany. They look rather pleased with their performance, don't they? I'm, they should be. It was a conservative performance, very well skated. Nice overall performance. While we're standing by for the marks, there's an interesting sidelight to this year's World Championship. 
You know, one of the problems always of figure skating, one of the frustrations, as it is with gymnastics and diving, is the fact that it's a subjectively judged sport. There's no winning time, there's no winning height. It's strictly a matter of opinion on the part of the judges. Well, in a move that is certainly unprecedented since we've been covering this sport, it's been a good many years now, the judges of the Soviet Union have been suspended by the International Skating Union for a full year. There are no Soviet judges here. The reason, although, wasn't stated in so many words. The implication was clear that they were suspended.